Would you kill a man on the path to redemption? What if that path to redemption involved putting you in harm's way? What if, though, you were only put in harm's way for the greater good of serving the people? Would you kill a man based on the words of a Daedric Prince? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Michael, and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today, we're going to be answering all of these hard-hitting questions. In a quest to save Dawnstar from chronic nightmares plaguing its citizens, the Dragonborn teams up with the Dark Elf Priest of Mara named Aranda. Together, you head to Nightcaller Temple and uncover the true nature of the problem. This quest, which is called Waking Night, Nightmare, by the way, ultimately ends by giving you a choice. Kill Aranda at the behest of Vaymina and claim her artifact, the Skull of Corruption, or alternatively, you can allow Aranda to complete his Adric ritual, destroying the Skull of Corruption and gaining the priest as a permanent companion, if you so choose. At face value, this may seem like a fairly straightforward choice, help the good guy priest or the evil Daedric Prince. But of course, that is not all there is to it. This is the Elder Scrolls universe after all, and it is rare that any choice is so black and white. Is it possible that there is justification for the killing of Aranda? There is much more than meets the eye here, and we can properly piece together both his story and true nature by combining all the information from his quest dialogues and the dialogue pieces that he drops as a companion, bringing it all together with a little detective work. As you know, it all begins in Dawnstar, where you quickly find that everyone's being plagued by nightmares. You learn that people are relying on a dark elf by the name of Aranda, a priest of Mara, for help. After discussing the matter with him, he'll tell you that the nightmares are the work of the Daedric Prince Vaymina, coming from a source within a nearby structure called Nightcaller Temple. He says it's a place of Vaymina worship, and he needs your help to put an end to it and help the people of the city. He also drops in that he needs to return to the source of the problem, and when you inquire about why he said return, he will say, I've already said too much. If anyone overhears what we're saying, it could start a panic. I would simply ask that you trust me and help help me end Dawnstar's nightmares. While heading there, he tells you how the structure is known as the Tower of the Dawn, and it was deserted for a long time before Nightcaller Temple was established inside. It's a ruin within a ruin, and the temple has been abandoned for decades at this point. For most, this is where he would start to seem very suspicious. These suspicions are eventually proven warranted as you make your way through the structure. Aranda stops and comes clean about his past. Turns out he was once a priest of Vaymina, serving her from the temple. That was until until the orcs attacked. Vaymina's nightmares had been tormenting these orcs, and they decided to lash out at the source. Aranda, who at the time was originally called Brother Casimir, was instructed to release a magical gas called the Miasma. This was used for rituals that placed those affected into a deep sleep. It was designed to slow down the aging process. However, the longer an individual is exposed, the more their mind can be damaged, and those under its effect for long periods of time have been known to lose their minds entirely or never Never wake up at all. So Aranda released the miasma, but then instead of being put into a deep sleep with the rest of his brothers and sisters, he fled, leaving the other priests, his friends, to die. This haunts him to this day, and he says that he can never forgive himself for what he did. However, he is now seeking redemption through Mara's guidance. So after you find out that Aranda has a history with the Daedra in this very temple he has taken you to, you can actually get quite the emotional response out of him by saying, I knew it, you're a liar. He will respond to this with, And what would you have me say? Sorry for following the misguided teachings of a mad divine? Sorry for stealing memories from children? Do you realize when the orcs attacked, I was only concerned with myself? I fled and left my brothers and sisters behind to die. I've spent the last few decades living in regret and seeking redemption for Mara, and by her benevolence, I will right my wrongs. While I can respect his honesty and quest for redemption, it does call elements of his character into question. He clearly cared for his fellow priests of Vaymina, and he fled, not because he realized the vile ways of Vaymina, not because he thought stealing memories and tormenting others with nightmares is wrong, but because he was scared. Aranda betrayed them because he was scared, a coward who prioritized his own well-being. However, this is something that he openly admits, acknowledging his selfishness. This is something that he is trying to atone for. When you tell him, you should have told me the truth, he'll admit 
Yes, you're right, I should have, but I didn't know what to say. This seems reasonable, considering that most people would scorn someone who belonged to a Daedric cult, so in the interest of helping those very same people, it's best he kept it under wraps. At this point, you may be thinking, well, of course I shouldn't kill Aranda. He just had a bad past and is trying to be better. Well, keep listening, because as we continue through the quest, the keen eye can catch a few points that reveal the true nature of his character. Obviously, as he knows about Vaymina, he'll point out that the Skull of Corruption, Vaymina's artifact, is the source of the problem. He goes on to explain. Lore holds that the Skull of Corruption holds a constant hunger for the memories of others. The Skull has been out of touch for so long, I fear it's gained the ability to reach out on its own and try to feed. What it does with these memories is just conjecture and an argument for scholars and historians to this very day. There's a barrier that blocks your path, leading Aranda to ask you to help him locate a special book in the library. This thick book is known as The Dreamstride, and was written by the mysterious alchemists of Vaymina. Reading this book for ourselves is very important, as it allows us to catch one of Aranda's lies. It reads, for over a thousand years, the priests of Amina have been masters of the art of alchemy. The complexity and potency of their mixtures are nothing short of legendary. These alchemical treasures are so highly sought after that a single draft showing up on the black market can command sums in the tens of thousands of septums. Of the numerous potions that have surfaced to date, Vaymina's torpor is perhaps the most impressive. A single sip of this viscous liquid places the imbiber in a state known known as the dream stride. This condition allows the subject to experience the dreams of another as if they were actually there. The subject becomes an integral part of the dream, behaving as if they belong. To any other entities in this dream state, the subject will be mistaken for the dreamer. The subject will even find his mannerisms, speech patterns, and knowledge expanded appropriately. To an observer, after the subject has imbibed the potion, they will appear to vanish. As the subject traverses distances within the dream, they will also traverse distances in the actual world. When the torpor's effect has expired, the subject will fade back into reality in the exact same location projected within the dream stride. Some dream striders have transported their subjects a few feet, and some have appeared thousands of miles from their origin in a matter of minutes. It's to be noted that the dream stride is highly dangerous and presents the subject with numerous pitfalls. In certain dreams, subjects have been exposed to life-threatening scenarios such as sickness, violence, and even death. In most cases, the subject simply fades back into our world without harm, but in some instances, the subject never reappeared and was assumed to have expired or the subject reappeared deceased. It's also quite possible that the subject could reappear in a precarious or hazardous location in reality, even though that location appeared safe within the dream stride. Vaymina's torpor is as mysterious and elusive as the priests that created it. It's unknown whether this unique transport mechanism is a result of the torpor itself or simply the odd machinations of Vaymina, but the potential for using the dream stride to penetrate seemingly impassable obstacles certainly outweighs its mysterious nature. After bringing this information to Aranda, he'll explain his knowledge on the subject. When you ask him if it's some kind of potion, he says, Yes. The torpor grants an ability the priests of Vermina called the Dream Stride, using dreams to travel distances in the real world. If you react in disbelief and claim it's impossible, he'll say, I assure you, the Dream Stride is well known in Verminian lore. If you read the Dreamstride book like we just did, we get some conflicting statements. It says that the Dreamstride is highly dangerous and presents numerous pitfalls, but on the other hand, it says in most cases the subject fades back into our world without harm. Of course, like any magical experiment, there is danger involved. So there's an option where you can decide to say to him, forget it, it could kill me, which could be true, considering that it is called highly dangerous. Aranda presumably knows all of this, but in instead chooses to reply, No, all my research points in the opposite direction. This is the exact liquid the priests would drink. The only question in my mind is whether you will be granted the dream stride. Otherwise, the worst that could happen is a bad aftertaste. I swear upon Lady Mara that I would never let any harm befall you. 
Now, there are two ways of looking at this. Either he is lying through his teeth or he genuinely disagrees with the statement, highly dangerous. Perhaps his research does actually point in the opposite direction. I mean, after all, the book does also say in most cases, the subject comes out without harm. But if you instead choose to say, sounds dangerous, how can you be certain? Aranda will confess. I will not lie to you. There is some risk involved. The last time the torpor was imbibed could have been decades ago. But I swear upon Lady Mara that I will do everything within my power to prevent any harm from befalling you. Two different stories are being told here, depending on your response. If you seem panicked, he plays down the risk, and if you seem calmer about it, he seems to admit the risk. However, once again, it is some risk, which does match up with what the book says. The problem here is that the book gives conflicting views, but that is not too important. The takeaway here is that Arando seems to be saying whatever it takes to convince you to go ahead with drinking the torpor, even if that involves potential harm. But why doesn't he just drink it? Well, if you question him by saying, I'm going to be your test subject then. Aranda will claim that, as a sworn priest of Mara, the elixir won't work for me. The torpor will only work for priests of Vaimina or the unaffiliated. I'd say this is just inserted as rationalization for the player to experience the dream stride. However, if we only go off in-game experiences and your own character's perspective, this can also be seen as false. Simply put, you can be a Daedric Prince's champion, you can be a werewolf sworn to the hunting grounds of her scene after death, or be a aligned with the Aedra, with the Agent of Mara or Debella Blessings. Anyways, the Torpor will still work on you if you're affiliated with other deities, suggesting that Arando telling you it only works on the unaffiliated or the priests of Vaimina is simply not true. One could argue that he is simply too cowardly to risk his own life and instead chooses to risk yours, and he has shown himself to be a coward in the past. Just because he has repented for his actions and is seeking redemption doesn't mean he's solved the potential underlying issue of his fear leading him to betray, or in this case, misguide others. So after you get the torpor and drink it, you live through the experiences of when he was called Brother Casimir. You talk to the members of the cult he considers his friends, and you experience him assuring them that, I've made my peace, I'm ready. As we know, Aranda was not ready, and had not made his peace. He was actually scared, and so he acted like he was ready to his friends, but then he fled. But wait, there's more. After you come out of the dream stride and go back to Aranda, one of the dialogue options you can say to him is, are you mad? I could have died. To this option, Aranda will have this same response, regardless of what he told you earlier. He'll say, I thought I was clear regarding the dangers that awaited you within the dream stride. However, this hardly matters any longer, as you appear to have exited unscathed. Previously, if you had acted a bit hesitant and he had told you of the dangers, this would make sense. But if you picked the option causing him to tell you that his research indicates the worst that could happen is a bad aftertaste, and then he says he already warned you of the dangers, it seems really suspicious. What's also a bit odd is that Arando seems to be very fascinated by the Daedra still. He notes that Vaimina's torpor is quite amazing and the blessings of a divine distilled down into an ingestible liquid. During the quest, he also mentions mentions that he shouldn't let his interest in Vaimina's machinations delay your objective. Clearly, he's still very in awe with this stuff. It seems like he's definitely more disgusted with himself for betraying his brothers and sisters than he is at being a part of their cult and doing the questionable activities involved with serving Vaimina. Later on, as a companion, he will talk about his upbringing more and admit shame for his past and mention questionable things he did in the cult, but we don't know about any of this yet as the player character before the choice to kill him arises. After being forced to kill his friends to proceed with saving Dawnstar from their nightmares, he questions Mara. Is this punishment for my past? Is it Mara's will to torment me so? He then uses a ritual he says was granted to him by Lady Mara to dispel the barrier and eventually destroy the staff. As a little aside, I'd also say his deep red magic that he uses looks a lot more Daedric in origin, made of similar color to the magical barrier which originally surrounded the staff to 
begin with. So maybe it could just be something he learnt as a priest of Vaimina, which he doesn't want to admit, so he says it's a ritual from Mara. When he goes to remove the barrier around the Skull of Corruption, Vaimina speaks to you and tells you that he's going to betray you and that you should kill him. If you choose to honour this request and kill him, you'll get the Skull of Corruption for yourself, being able to charge it up to do more damage by harvesting dreams with it. However, it's not really a strong artifact. If you don't kill Aranda, he destroys the skull and does not betray you, instead offering you his companionship as compensation. Both options see the nightmares of Dawnstar cured. If you let him live, he'll tell you. My intention was to spend the rest of my years here, burying the past and praying for forgiveness. But instead, I wish to offer my services to you. If you ever wish to journey with me, I'll be here. He can then travel with you and will drop dialogue that talks about his past, but his backstory is a little tricky to make sense of. Aranda claims that he was recruited as an acolyte of Vaimina as a young elf. As a result, he says he had no real childhood to speak of, as they weren't permitted to socialize. He says he has spent the last few decades regretting his decision to flee, and that after running from Nightcaller Temple, he ended up wandering around Skyrim for years, until a priest of Mara who lived in Morthal took him in. At first, Arando said it was difficult to come to the ways of Mara, but credits his fellow priests for helping him get there, saying they were kind and patient. He claims that finding Mara was the greatest moment of of my life. I'll never forget the warmth that spread through my heart when we embraced. This means that he was brought up in a cult of Vaimina worshippers and only left this cult a few decades ago, which isn't a super long time considering the lifespan of a dark elf. He'll also tell you that he grew up in the Pale, saying it was his home for most of his life. Based on what we know, this must be where the Vaimina worshippers were for most of his life, and it makes sense as it's where Nightcaller Temple exists to the modern day. However, he mentions that as a young Light of Vaimina, he paid his dues in a shrine located within the catacombs of a fort in Cyrodiil. There are ways this could make sense, such as him being born in Cyrodiil and then worshipping Vaimina there until he was about 13 and then moving to the Pale and growing up and spending most of his life there. He says his parents are long dead and they lived wonderful lives and he has no sad stories to tell about them. I'm confused how well he knew them unless they were also part of the cult. Aranda also mentions that he served as a healer in a fort long ago. This also sounds a bit odd, but by long ago, he could just mean 20 years ago, well after he became became a follower of Mara, and if it's true it helps to show that he's on his path to redemption. He also mentions he was a student at the Bard's College for a short time, until his affiliation with Vaimina was discovered. He hasn't been back to solitude since. His stint with the Bard's College could have been either during his affiliation with the cult before he betrayed his friends, or afterwards but before he found Mara. Anyways, he goes on to tell you that he's done a lot of questionable things in his life, and claims that serving Vaimina was a horrible mistake. Like I said earlier, he still seems very fascinated by her. He explains that being a priest of Vaimina put him very close to dark sorcery at its worst, and that I've seen my share of black magic, but that's all in the past now. In addition to this, he'll also let you know, I've never admitted this before, but I've killed more than I care to admit. I'll just leave it at that. One of his quotes is actually, How dare you defile this temple, orc? Which is a very odd thing to say about a place and a cult he claims to be ashamed for having anything to do with. Not to mention the orcs were only invading the temple because of the nightmares that Aranda and the cult were letting happen to them. But then of course, he says things like, I've always felt a great deal of guilt running from Nightcaller Temple and leaving my friends to die. I'll never forgive myself for that. Personally, after really thinking about all of his dialogue, I think he has a big problem with guilt, doing whatever he needs to do to redeem himself in his own eyes. You could argue that he doesn't really care about the innocence of Dawnstar as much as he cares for his own ego's redemption. You could say that he lies and risks the Dragonborn's life, not for the greater good, but instead to rid himself of guilt, which just happens to serve a greater purpose along the way. You could also argue that he is not really that devoted to Mara considering his fascination with the Daedra, but to be fair, you can be fascinated by something and not condone it. Then again, he does lash out at the orcs for defiling the temple, indicating some kind 
kind of zealous attitude about Vaymina, but knowing all this, should you kill Aranda? Are you justified in slaughtering this Dark Elf so you can get the Skull of Corruption? Well, clearly, as we have discussed, he isn't some goody two-shoes priest who is holy and just in ambition and character. He has proven himself a coward, a liar, a traitor to his friends. He would acknowledge all of this and has spent the last decades trying to atone for his actions with the help of Mara. But as we can see, it would seem old habits die hard. He lies to the Dragonborn about the Torpor. He risks your life, arguably because he is too much of a coward to risk his own. Remember his whole talk about how his Mara affiliation stops him from using the Torpor doesn't stack up. But ultimately, a character does not deserve death just because he possesses flaws. And to be fair, you could argue him risking your life and downplaying the risk was obviously not with the intention of killing you. It was in his best interest to have you successfully travel the dream stride so you may help him rid the nightmares of Dawnstar. Maybe he's a coward for not doing it himself, but that could be said about many people. Does it really matter whether goals for the greater good are accomplished by motivations of ego or altruism if ultimately the result is the same? Now, of course, the huge caveat here is any role-playing based decisions. If you are playing a Daedra worshipper of Vaymina, of course kill him. If your character is morally bankrupt and only concerned with power, then of course crush his skull. But for pretty much every morally good kind of character, you just shouldn't kill him. I even thought about an overzealous Vigilant of Stendar kind of build, but there is just no way he would kill a Rando at the behest of a Daedra, even if he thought he deserved it. Perhaps the zealous Vigilant would kill him afterwards for all his unforgivable past crimes, but then again Stendar is the Divine of Mercy after all, and it doesn't seem particularly fitting for a Vigilant to kill a Priest of Mara, atoning for their past sins. But just to stir the pot a little, what if you are a neutral, more morally grey character? Not a bad person, just someone who isn't bound by any strong moral ideals. Think about it like this. If you just met someone who had killed plenty of people before, but then they said they had some kind of born-again religious awakening, and that you could tell they were lying to you about things, and that they risk your life while you help them do a quest which at some point would allow them to get close to an evil source of power, would you trust them? Again, there's no right or wrong answer here, but I just think it's super reasonable for many neutral characters to kill a rando guilt-free. They don't know he was taken into a cult as a child, and they don't know if he's actually good-intentioned after only experiencing one quest with him. What they can tell is that this elf they've just met has already lied to them more than once and has risked their life in doing so, and he has betrayed his friends in the past, switched affiliations in a polarized manner before from Vaymina to Mara, still seems fascinated with their more evil affiliation from the past, and presumably have done very questionable things before, such as killing people as they were part of a Daedric cult for the majority of their life. Forgiveness has a time limit for some people and no time limit for others. So you really have to think about how your character would perceive Aranda's past and his current intentions. Obviously, after doing the quest and sparing his life, we know that he won't betray us, but your character in the moment doesn't know that. Your character may also not like the fact that after being ashamed of leaving his friends to die, he is irresponsibly leading you into the problem he created that he knows is dangerous, where he has you help him slaughter a path through his former friends anyway as they awaken from a deep sleep. In addition to bending the truth and leaving out things, it makes Vaymina's case that he's going to betray you quite convincing. But despite the role-playing elements, do we think that Aranda, knowing everything we know after getting him as a companion, is necessarily deserving of death? Well, no, we don't. He has flaws, he is a coward, he betrayed his friends, he lies, and he's drawn to the Daedra, but a lot of this is due to his upbringing, and we think he is truly seeking redemption now. Whether for his ego or for the greater good, it doesn't really matter. We do not think Arando should be killed, despite being a much shadier person than we originally believed. But it could definitely make sense for your character to kill him. So what do you think about Arando? Is he super dodgy? Should he be killed? Why or why not? Perhaps you don't like that he keeps calling you my son or my daughter. Perhaps you really wanted the Oblivion Walker achievement without doing the glitch in Hercene's quest. Let me know your thoughts, subscribe for more Elder Scrolls content, like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, the links to our social media can be found in the description below. My name is Michael, thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.